win just one hydroplane race, a boat must race in three and sometimes even four heats all in one day. The first two or three heats narrow the field from 10 to 15 boats down to four to six qualifiers that run in the final. In closed course competition, the three-ton Thunderboats reach speeds in excess of 160 miles per hour. And because of the extensive wear on the big 2,500 horsepower Allison and Rolls-Royce power plants, a mechanical failure can cause an apparent winner to sputter across the finish line dead last. The big danger in unlimited hydroplane racing is on the turn, where man and boat hang perilously close to a sudden and catastrophic end. If you've got a good driver with a good crew and an outstanding boat, the odds on making it into the final heat of a race are fairly good. The odds against winning the race are considerably less. Yet in 1972, one boat somehow managed to win six out of seven races on the hydro circuit. And practically every time the crew lowered their boat into the water, it set a new course record. The boat is the Atlas Van Lines U71. And 1972 was the year the worldwide moving company was flying on water. The road to an almost perfect season began in 1971, when hydroplane driver Bill Muncy joined boat owner Lee Chaineth on the Atlas Van Lines racing team. The 71 season was moderately successful, with the Atlas team winning two races and setting several lap and heat records. But a series of bad breaks kept the boat from a sensational first year. 1972 was sensational, though. We pick up this final heat in the middle of the third lap, and this is the important one for Budweiser and Atlas. They can both win this championship today if they get a win in this heat, and looks like Budweiser is up in the pack, and Atlas is back in the pack, and it'll be a lot of driving on the part of Bill Muncy to make a race out of this one. They come around the turn on the outside. That is Town Club moving up to the lead, but look on the inside. It's Bill Muncy moving up very quickly between boats and challenging for the lead with Town Club. They move through three and four, and Town Club appears to be out of it, but look who's moving up on the inside now. It's Budweiser. On the inside, Budweiser. On the outside, it's Atlas, and these are the two that will have to battle it out for today's championship, and Bill Muncy is really pouring the coal to it as he moves around turn four. They're nose to nose, and those rooster tails could be dangerous if they get behind one another, but Bill Muncy he doesn't appear to want to do that. He's moving out and taking the lead by about a boat length and a half. Third and fourth place now going to Timex and Hay and Pack. They move out of turn four again, and now Bill Muncy and Atlas have really opened up that lead to about 17 boat lengths. And look at the choppy water here. This could be very dangerous. That boat is starting to capitate a little bit, but Bill Muncy's experience over many years of hydroplane driving will probably take care of any little minor difficulties such as that. He moves down to the stretch, one more lap to go. Here's Town Club now pouring the nitrous oxide to it. That's the smoke you see, no danger there. That's just a little more power, but I'm afraid that won't help in this case. Here's Bill Muncy now moving down the back stretch on the final lap, and he has opened approximately a fourth of a lap on Miss Budweiser. Bill Muncy and Atlas going for another win in a tremendous season of winning for the boat and the driver. Here comes Miss Budweiser around the final turn. Second place, not bad for a day's work. But the win today and all the honors go to Bill Muncy and the Atlas Van Line Special. Thunder boating at its best. The incredible season began in Miami, Florida on June 4th as the Atlas Van Lines took the champion spark plug regatta from a tough field of 11 hydroplanes. Following Miami, it was on to Owensboro, Kentucky for the Kentucky Governor's Cup race and another win. For Muncy, it was his third straight annual win in the Owensboro Regatta. Other victories in 72 included the World Championship race at Madison, Indiana on July 4th. The Tri-Cities Atomic Cup at Pasco, Washington. And the Sea Bear Trophy race at Seattle, Washington. That climaxed a season which will be difficult for any boat to equal. 
for Bill Muncy, whose racing feat spanned 15 years in hydroplane racing with 34 victories in the trophy case, this was the shining moment in a career studded with gold. Really, there were so many highlights in the year that the one setback seems to stick out like a sore thumb. It was in Washington, D.C. We were running for the President's Cup, which we'd won in 1971, our first victory for Atlas. We'd won the two preliminary heats in which we were entered, and Seattle's pride of pay and pack have won both its preliminary heats as well. So we went into the final race dead even as far as points were concerned, and it was one of the most exciting races I've ever been in. First pay and pack had the lead, then we had it, then pay and pack, then us. We held the lead going into the final lap when I began lapping some slower boats, and somehow I momentarily got caught in the traffic, and when I finally got around them, I was looking at pay and pack's rooster tail, the backside, as it were. We made a charge for the wire, but there just wasn't enough time. That was the low point, really, of the 1972 season, a second place in Washington, D.C. So we have something to really shoot for this year. When Muncie says we, he's talking about himself, the boat, and the Atlas crew. Boat owner Shana, Wild Bill Cantrell, the crew manager. Jim Kurth, the crew chief. And the entire racing team that keeps the Atlas running smoothly at incredible speeds. You know, winning's a lot easier when you've got a crew like ours. Plus, it seems that everywhere we went last year, the, the fans were rooting for us. In most cases, we even had a ready-made fan section with us. Since I'm an official U.S. Navy recruiter, we've always got some Navy people rooting for us. Hey, it's great to know that you've got those fellas on your side. And everywhere we go, Atlas Van Lines agents are out in force to root us on. I get a kick out of working with Atlas agents. They really get up for the races and a lot of them take active roles in the regatta planning committees in their communities. When he won the Gold Cup on June 25, 1972 in Detroit, Muncie became only the second man to win the prized cup five times. The other was the gray fox of Algonac, the legendary Gar Wood. But even Gar Wood didn't dominate the competition the way the Atlas team did on this day. Because of the expanded field of hopefuls trying for the Gold Cup, Six preliminary heats had to be run to eliminate all but the five finalists. Every time the engine of the U-71 roared up and went onto the course, it would be destined to bring home the checkered flag. In each of three heats, Atlas completely overshadowed the field. In what might appear to be a close contest, the Atlas would open up margins over the opposition with Muncie pounding her out of the turns and injecting nitrous oxide into the fuel. The nitrous oxide, sometimes called laughing gas, enabled the Atlas to accelerate from 90 miles an hour to 150 miles an hour in five seconds. And when they came around on their final lap to capture the Gold Cup, you could tell that the crowd on the banks of the Detroit River was rooting for the Atlas van lines. Winning the Gold Cup in Detroit was my most triumphant day and represented more than just beating the other boats and drivers. For the first time, I felt that we'd really beaten the Detroit River. The river had taken four of the contenders out of the race. Luckily, no one was seriously injured, but there were a couple of damaged hulls along with some strains and bruises. Despite rivers swollen and filled with debris from Hurricane Agnes, Muncie and the Atlas completed the season without a mishap. They weren't always so lucky. But 72 was Atlas's year. And when the team capped off the season with a victory at the Seattle Sea Fair, the weather and the water seemed to be made for a script with a perfect ending. Ready now, and you heard it, the one minute gun. We are one minute away from the 1972 Sea Fair Trophy race. Here on beautiful Lake Washington, the racing conditions are ideal. The boats have been running all day long in ideal conditions. And the Tom Baker in the background, they take the north turn, and here they come. The clock says 40 seconds to go in that north turn. The Vance TX has the uh, slight lead on the outside there. But uh, the Notre Dame is bunched up in the middle. Muncie is way back, way back, Mike. He's way back in the pack, but maybe he'll get a run at it. On the extreme inside is the butt, and we've got the Notre Dame, and they strain outside as the Van CX, and Muncie's shooting up the middle. Here they come. On the inside. The butt wise is on the inside. Muncie's right in the middle of the pack. He's flying. He may take the lead at the start. On the inside, the Budweiser. Muncie in the middle. Notre Dame! Notre Dame! Here they go into the south 
left turn, it's anybody's boat race. The Pizza Pete is in the middle, the Atlas is in the middle. The Notre Dame took it across the starting line. Way on the outside is the Van CX. We got a boat race. Baldwin going right down into that turn. And you see it right there on King into the corner. That's Muncie and the Notre Dame. The Notre Dame is coming out of that corner, number one, it looks like. On the outside is Muncie, Notre Dame, Muncie, Notre Dame, Muncie, 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 Muncie. Bill Muncie turning it on ahead of the Notre Dame, and he just pulls away from the gentleman. He's got it to the full board, that baby screaming. On the inside, another day, and way back to Budweiser. The boat race is Atlas. Atlas and Muncie is ahead. He's pulling away from the Notre Dame, and Chenoweth is pushing it to the floorboard. He's got a boat race. In first position, the NCX, now it's the Budweiser. Budweiser ahead of the NCX, the NCX is five. Way back in the field is Pizza Pete, and in the sixth position, it's the Henley Swift Wave. All right, into the north turn, we've got Muncie and the Atlas. That's the Tripway on the Lincoln trip. The Tripway isn't racing in this one. We've got Muncie, who used to race the Tripway, in the Atlas, out of the north turn. Lap number one, Muncie in the lead, cutting that buoy perfectly, and that boat is riding magnificently, Mike. Yes, it certainly is. Boy, he's got this thing turned on. I've never seen that boat run any better. Bruce McNeil is sticking up beautifully. Bill Muncy, the leader of lap number one in second place, the Notre Dame, the Dean Shadowist, third place, the Budweiser, Max Fiat, crossing in. Into the south turn, we've got a time. Listen to this, 116.756. I'm going to scream it again. Bill Muncy, 116.756. That's a record, Michael. That's a new record, and that is fantastic speed. That is really unbelievable speed. The second place boat. The boat had set a course record for the fastest lap, and on the next lap, they broke the record they had just set. The real race was for second place, because the Atlas continued to pull away, and Muncie didn't let up until the wire. One more turn to go. He's led all the way. There's your winner, if he can make it. And the Atlas crew can cross their fingers now, because here he comes, the checkered flag. The checkered flag is out. Bill Muncy's coming in real close to the barge at this point. Oh, look at him come. You reach out and touch him. woo He's flying. He knows he's got it. He can post in now. He's a winner. It was just a great season for us. We were up against some really excellent competition and our boat was just superb. She did everything we asked and, and never a complaint. But the best part is that 1973 could be equally exciting. If you're near a town or city that's planning a hydroplane race this year, give yourself a treat and attend one of the most colorful and exciting spectacles you'll ever witness. Bill and the Atlas Van Lines crew will be looking for you.